Oh, it's the beginning where I sing and a bunch of people get mad. Oh, it's the beginning of the show and a bunch of people are going to get mad because I'm singing at the beginning. And then they're probably not going to watch the show. But that's kind of funny to me. Yeah. What up, Internet? It's Friday. Oh, my God. It's Black Friday. It's Friday Black. Black Friday. I'm freaking out. The deals are crazy. (laughs) Almost every single thing says it's like, it's a Black Friday in America. Oh, my God. Um, what's up everybody? Happy Friday. I hope you have the day off. I hope it's a day off for you guys. Um, I hope you're not, um, I hope you're not stuck at work. I hope you're not doing something crazy. You know what I mean? I hope you're not doing anything totally crazy, you know, before, but you know, I don't want the, I want y'all being stuck at work, you know, being like, oh man. I'm stuck at work and it's the day after Thanksgiving. I should be eating leftover turkey sandwiches and getting wild. Well, that's if you're in America. You know what I mean? If you're in uh, New Zealand or the UK or who else? What? Well, let me see here. So we got some people from Italy. We got Lorena from Italy. We got uh, Bonkers About Alice from the UK. We got Joel Gillett from New Zealand. Um, let me see if we got any other international folks. I don't know, but either way, you guys should probably be eating leftover turkey sandwiches too, because why not? (laughs) Right? We should be able to should be able to be pulling that off, right? Uh, First to the chat today was Rocky's Rocky, followed by Tiskin. I like that Tiskin, a Tiskin, a (laughs) Tiskin. I like it. Fifty Four Punchy is here today. Good to see you. M Howie Nine, the Nano Tank is here. Um. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Oh, and Tiskin's from the Netherlands. Oh, we got a bunch of people from uh, Europe showing up today. Like it. I like that a lot. Um, 54 Punchy says, share the stream. YouTube is not good about letting people know. That's right. YouTube isn't about good about letting people know, but that's okay. It helps keep our uh, <clears throat> keeps helps keep our uh, our posse here. We're a close-knit group. We're a close-knit community of oceaneers and whatnot. Um you know, I think our goal would be to get all of the oceaneers on a live stream one day. And we don't, we generally don't do that because, um, let me see, let me check. Current update on the oceaneers over at the uh, Patreon page 284. We gained a bunch and then we lost some, which is fine. It's okay. I know it's the, it's getting to be that season. You know, we're losing some people and that's okay. You know, you got to take, you got to take care of what you got to take care of. Um, but, uh, we would like to hit the 284 live sometime, but we rarely hit that. And that's because we are close knit. We're a small group here. This is what we call that, uh, uh, the small group, not the large group. We're the small group. You know what I mean? We're small, but we're fierce. We're like a, we're like a tiny, powerful star to try and help the aquatic community with people that keep fish tanks in their house or their basement or their fish barn or where else i don't know you know any of that stuff any of those places wherever you're keeping your fish tanks wherever you're keeping your plants whatever it could be that's the main focus that we're here for that's the main thing but we also like to have a good time we like to have a good time because hey why not why not have a good time why not have a good time? Let, why not let us just have a good time here on the internet, chatting about whatever is going on and uh, what could be happening in, in your neck of the woods? So, quick Thanksgiving recap: We didn't do the, um, we did not do the travel around for Thanksgiving this year. Um, that has been our pretty typical behavior 
um, over the last four, five, 10, 20 years, however long it's been. Um, but we didn't do that because we have a brand new baby here, and Miss Lindenator is here asking about um, uh, about the baby. How's the baby doing? Well, I will tell you, we went on a little uh, field trip today. We went on a little field trip to the Home Depot. The show is not sponsored by the Home Depot. We don't have any affiliation with the Home Depot, except we go there a lot other than that. Um, and I purchased myself a new drill bit to replace one that got broken. Also, uh, Victoria has been uh, pinching her pennies and uh, saving the savings and utilizing line of credit because we're going to be replacing the washer and dryer here. So we made a bit of a we made a bit of a financial commitment here to be doing some serious clothes washing and drying here in the future uh, because of the Black Friday deals. We we had been shopping for them a while back. And of course, the the guy who was selling them said, I wouldn't buy anything right now because it's going to cost a lot more than it will in like a month and a half. And we were like, oh, okay, we'll be back then. <laughs> literally, literally, the guy at the store was like, I don't really care if I make a sale. I just want you to know it'll be a lot cheaper fairly soon. And we were like, oh, that's cool. So we uh, we ordered those today and we'll get them. Um, and uh, we'll get those dropped off at the at the beginning of the new year. I think so, sometime right after the new year. You know, we scheduled it a ways out. So uh, I've got a bunch of remodeling to do as you guys know the new office is uh going to be completed and that will have um that will have the um washer and dryer down there so the washer and dryer will be moved to the basement um but you know how it is uh 54 punchy wait what's going on wait somebody's got a giveaway what happened some kind of giveaway going on i don't know Trying to catch up with the chat here. What's going on? Thanks, Terry's Tropical Tanks. I'm having a blast learning everything he's doing. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Ultimate Fish Keeping just stopped in to say hi. I don't know. I don't know who's doing a giveaway. I don't know who's doing a, a, a giveaway. Um, I am currently not doing a giveaway, but I will say... Um, the big Black Friday thing that's going on in my neck of the woods is... The aquarium co-op has 15% off everything in um, his store. I mean, I don't know about the physical location, but the online store is pretty much what most people, um, you know, would know about. And um, so the reason I bring that up is that th that will be ending this weekend. Uh, a bunch of people... Um, got in on it nice and nice and early as a, as a, the last live stream we were talking about, um, that, uh, it's a good idea to get in early because stuff is certainly going to sell out from there. Uh, and right now it's 15% off everything. I did get some emails from people that were like, yeah, man, I got on there. I got my Finex lights. I got my Fluval lights. Uh, they ordered the CO2 that um that they're looking to get so i i think personally right now it's a really good time to get those big ticket items and the reason i say that is because like right now it's 15 percent off like all that the the kind of spendy things that you were that you may or may not want to get for your fish tanks uh as you guys know i use the fluval um plant 3.0 light those the newer leds and um, they are awesome. They are a fantastic light. I've been um, looking at the Finex ones that Corey's been using in uh, some of his spots. Um, in uh, in some of his tanks, those Finex lights were quite good. I, and, you know, I, I, as you guys know, I'm not a huge fan of the Finex lights, but they do work quite well. Um, so it's, you know, that might be an option, too, that you have to go through. Uh, I, and one of the reasons I'm saying those big ticket items is because in uh, just just over a month, the 
So the tariffs, the import tariffs, everything's going to be going up by 25% of like right now. It's going to go up because of the taxes. And then, so, I mean, if you realistically think about it, it's like, it's basically like 40% off what it would be if you waited until next year. So, which next year is only like a month away. So it's like, if you just waited another month, it'd be like, oh man, it's going to be so much more expensive. So I, I just basically try to break it down for people like, I would go there. I would get there early. Um, as the nanotech is asking, how are you doing with the gentleman's bet? We are currently in the lead. Um, if you guys want to know, we are currently in the lead, but there are some other, they're catching up. <laughs> so we are currently in the lead, but that is tentative. You know what I mean? So um, we might be able to win. Who knows? Uh, if you guys want to get your orders in from the co-op, uh, I would m greatly appreciate it if you use my affiliate link. Uh, if you want to use somebody else's, feel free. Um, but I do like to remind you guys that uh, I just wanted to tell you guys that it's just going to be a bunch of stuff. Uh, uh, Big Smoke says, only Black Friday shopping I did this year was aquarium co-op. I ordered a Fluval 3.0 and a bunch of plants, and I actually just made another order before coming here. All right, man. That's Hey, that's the way to do it. Um, that's definitely the, the way to go. Uh, I think it's, I think it's, if not only is it a really good deal, uh, it's also, you know, it's kind of a good deal for everybody. You know what I mean? So, um, I, I think ultimately I would definitely just get on it if you could, if not, you know, I know how it is. I know how it is. Christmas is coming up. Christmas is looming. So I, I might remind people that um, it might be a good thing to just pass on to somebody like, hey, this is what I want for Christmas, and you might as well get it now because it's going to just get more expensive. <laughs> uh, Bentley used the link uh, to pick up a pair of the 48-inch Fluval 3.0s. Got some uh, lighting ready for tank projects. That's awesome. Um, and to be honest with you guys, the, I, I really like those Fluval lights. And I don't think there's going to be anything better coming out anytime soon as far as like the cost goes, because there are like Kessels and a couple other things that I think are technically like a better light, right? But, um, but there was so much more expensive that it kind of, in my opinion, like it downgrades it because of how expensive it is. You know what I mean? It's like, but I would lose a mortgage payment switch into just one of the tanks over to Kessel lights. You know what I mean? So, um, like I, I get it. Like the really big, um, 48 inch, like, uh, 3.0s are, what are they like 170 bucks or something like that. So I know that they aren't cheap. So I fully, I fully understand like where most people are coming from where they're like, ah, you know, I just don't have the money right now, but I get it. But, um, I just wanted to remind people that it is going to go up, you know, um, so that's going to be, that's going to be a deal. Um, let's see. And there we go. Oh, okay. Yeah. And if anybody's wondering what I'm talking about, here's a, uh, here's a link right here. You guys can, uh, just click on that link and it'll take you over to the co-op and show you what I'm talking about. Uh, but the big thing that I wanted to remind people is that the CO2 equipment is definitely not going to get cheaper either. Um, that's going to be a big, that's going to be a huge hit when, um, those tariffs come in because that's going to hit almost all the CO2 equipment and stuff like that. And I am kind of intrigued as to what is exactly going to go up in like cost in reality. You know what I mean? I'm really wondering what it's going to be. Um, what, what the, what's going to go up cost wise in reality. And I mean, it, when I say in reality, it's like the, you know, the parts and materials and stuff like that. I, I just wonder how much and what is really going to go up, um, by the bottom line as, as far as like, you know, if you go to Home Depot or something like that, like what, what's going to be the big difference? Um, I don't know. You know, I wonder what the big deal is going to be, um, with all that and, uh, what in reality it'll look like next year, you know? Cause I mean, if everything's just going up by 25%, you know, I don't know. 
Uh, Barnabas Roy is asking, you should consider Auto Cats uh, for the new 120. They are awesome algae eaters. Uh, yeah, as you guys know, I used to um, uh, I used to raise and breed autos in some of the big old tanks that I used to have. Um, I really like Auto Synclus. Uh, I find them to be really, really fantastic. Uh, uh, fantastic fish. I, I don't really find any fish to be that good of an algae eater, though, honestly. Uh, either, either they're only eating algae off the glass and stuff like that. So then you have to start growing algae or, um, you have to find a food that they're going to feed off of. And, um, that's probably going to be a problem too. So, um, you know, and they're the zebra autos are the ones that I really like the giant zebra autos. So, and I know that the wet spot every once in a while gets some in and I'm considering probably, looking for some at some point in time, but they have to be aquacultured. I will not buy auto sinkless from the wild anymore. So unless I know that they're bred in a tank, uh, I don't want them because I know how they're harvested. They get harvested. Um, the, the methods that they get harvested with are just not good for, um, they're not good for the environment. They are not good for the long, the long-term well-being of that fish. And, uh, it's just not, it's just not great. It's just not, it's just not a great deal. And, and it makes me pretty sad. Uh, M Howie nine says, are you watching the apple cup? It looks like a good game. Uh, no, I'm not watching the apple cup. Uh, personally, um, uh, personally, I don't care about college football because, I, and I guess the way, I guess the way that I would relate this, I really like the game of football. Um, I like the NFL and I just like how, um, pretty much an even playing field it is for the NFL. Uh, I don't like college that much because, um, of the politics that go into it. First of all, like they have all these kids playing for free, you know, and they're lured in, I think in a really kind of creepy way. Um, I don't think that they're taking that good a care. You know, I don't think that they're that concerned about concussions and injuries and stuff like that. Um, it just, um, and so then I consider that. And then I also consider that college football fans are crazy. Like people are kind of tripping about how they feel about their college football team. You know what I mean? It's like some guys like Alabama, you know, or, you know, I'm Crimson Tide. I'm bleeding red you know um which i find to be a little off-putting where they're just kind of out of their minds and it's supposed to be like a collegiate thing it's supposed to have like some kind of you know what i mean like i don't think it has the what it is and uh i didn't go to either wazoo or u-dub you know i went to community college because um it uh <laughs> you know the, uh, I, I went to community college cause it's way cheaper and you get the same education realistically. Um, now I don't have a, a master's degree or a bachelor's degree, obviously. So I would have had to go on to that, but, um, I definitely don't think that it would have, you know, I would have gotten any kind of like better education or anything like that, uh, versus because, um, uh, the community colleges that I went to were really, really nice. So it wasn't like the 13th grade or anything like that. So, um, you know, I, I think I really learned what I was going to learn and, and, um, didn't come out with a giant, uh, I didn't come out with a giant, um, what's the word debt. I didn't have this huge monumental debt, you know? Um, and somebody was asking, uh, how do they harvest auto sinkless? Uh, so what they do is they actually add a, um, they actually add a chemical to the water uh, because catching autosynclus in the wild is, is fairly difficult uh, because they hang out in really fast uh, running water and uh, they hang out in these large schools and you basically kind of like have to dredge for them uh, in a kind of in kind of a way they're just not easy to catch in the wild. So what they do is is they um, they put a bunch of chemical in the um, in the river, you know, they just add it to the river and then, uh, the auto will come in from the, the fast flowing water into, into what would, you know, what do you call that? Like an alcove or something like that. And then they net them from out of there. Um, and they'll put like, 
10,000 of them, 20,000 of them, 100,000 of them in a bag and then just ship that whole thing like that. Um, just straight out of that like funky water with the poison in it and stuff. Um, and that's oftentimes that you find why auto sync lists won't last very long when you get them from a store. Um, that's one of the big hypotheses that, that most of the little super science nerds are all about is that uh, they are pretty damaged from that. And then they, they get shipped out super cheap. So that's why you go to like a fish store and they'll be like, oh, they're 99 cents for three or whatever. Uh, they get shipped out super cheaply. Um, and it's just not that great. So I just wouldn't, um, I just personally don't, don't go that route anymore unless they're, um, unless they're aquacultured, which I think that, you know, more often than not, the zebra autos, the bigger ones, the real big, the big ones, they, um, they are often, uh, aquacultured because, uh, they kind of sell for quite a higher price and stuff like that. So, um, uh, Barnabas Roy says, any tips with breeding autos? Uh, you're going to need a really big school of them. Um, so you're going to need like a hundred, 200, 300, 400, uh, like go big. You're going to need a big tank and then you have to do trigger, uh, water changes. You have to, you have to do these pretty monumental water changes. <laughs> so you have to do a hundred percent water changes to get them to trigger. So, um, you slowly raise up the temperature and then you have to do really big water changes. And that often is what triggers them to, um, uh, to, to get breeding and whatnot. And, uh, it's after that, it's pretty easy. As long as there's, uh, as long as it's a mature tank and stuff like that, then, then you'll get them. As you guys know, I, I don't normally go into the, um, the super sterile environment of breeding. Uh, you know, I mean, I don't have tanks set up with, um, you know, breeding mops and, and, and things like that. I would normally try to emulate their environment in the tank as much as possible, uh, to trigger them to breed. So that worked fairly well with autos because, um, those, those tanks that I had them in, um, often I was doing gigantic water changes on those. So it actually was kind of just working with the system and doing what I was doing with the system. So, um, it, it worked out fairly well and it was a lot of fun, but I loved them. You know, <laughs> uh, Barnabas says too much effort, might as well breed Neos. Um, yeah, yeah, I would breed, <laughs> I'd breed shrimp. Uh, I breed shrimp over, uh, autos at this point. Yeah. There's a bunch of stuff that we, uh, that we bred back in the day that was, just like so we could say we did it. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, I did that. Yeah. That's how I got into breeding betas. Like, I love breeding betas because it was just such a weird, um, it's such a weird thing. Roger's Aquarium has got to go. Okay, see you later. Uh, Pete is here. What's up, Pete Berlinski? Good to see you. All the way from Aust Australia. Um, Kay Walker, in the old days, the Aboriginal people used uh, foam bark leaves to stun the fish um oftentimes that's still done uh most uh tribes and stuff like that still use those techniques like clove uh, they'll add like natural clove that kind of stuff into the rivers and things and uh, to catch stuff but uh, it's not the greatest thing as far as that goes for the autos because they're just a, kind of a fragile fish and it just yeah it seems to damage them a lot uh, Luis Rodriguez says same situation here as Jordan. What does Jordan say? Coral FT5. Uh, Jordan Fisher, can you please send me in the right direction on my water? Uh, I have well water and water softener I currently don't use. I've been struggling with plants, but get tons of algae. Fish are all doing good. Um, okay, so it sounds like you have um, a deficiency. <laughs> Oh, that sneeze came out of nowhere. Whoa. <clears throat> Whoa, that was wild. Okay. Um, it sounds like you have a deficiency of something out there or in your water would be my biggest guess. And you could have either A, an overabundance of light. That could be the first thing that's happening. Um, I would shorten your fo photo period. So the time that the light is on, I would shorten that to between four and five hours. See what's going on from there. Um uh, I wouldn't let it, um, I, I would, I would make sure that you don't have a ton of light. That's obviously going to be kind of the first thing to look into. And I said, obviously, but maybe it's not obvious. Uh, the first thing to look into would be the amount of light 
time, the, the period of time that you have going with uh, your light. Then from there, you really want to see what you have going on in your water column. Uh, sounds like you have hard water, so it sounds like you have a lot of things coming into your tank as far as like minerals and things like that, which will make it easier for algae to grow because uh, oftentimes like that high mineral content, there's probably something in there that's making it really easy for the algae to just go, yeah, we're growing. Uh, now, one thing you could do is consider a pre-filter that's going to go, um, uh, you know, just a pre-filter, right? Just to kind of knock that water down a little bit. Um, I personally would stay away from anything expensive like um, deionizing the water. Uh, but something that you could do, and I think I... Hold on, let me, hold on, hold on, hold on. Where did that go? I had the stupid thing here. Where did it go? Oh, here it is. Okay, copy that. And then I can paste it in here. Maybe it'll let me do it. I don't know. So there's my Amazon store where I have a tendency to put stuff in there. Feel free to let me know if anything is missing. But um, there are some filter solutions that are in there that could be pretty affordable um, for doing a little bit of water changes that could probably knock down the minerals and make it just a little more chill, right? Without the super expense of deionizing the water um, or wasting water from the RO unit. So you, um, the there are some filter units in there that will show you, you basically what you're gonna do is you're just gonna be removing some of that excess mineral um, from the water column and not being too worried about getting it to a hundred percent. Um, what the, the, some of the filters in there, I don't, let me double check. I think they're in there, but some of the filters I posted in there are essentially for, um, like high end coffee machines. <laughs> and, um, so there's one that's pretty expensive, but there's some that are down here. There's one down here that's cheaper. It's like 70 bucks, but let me find, let me find this one. And then there's like a, there's a kind of a better one that doesn't have an RO on it. Where did it go? Go find it. I want that one. I want the, hold on a second. This will take just a, just a, just about it. Uh, where it should be associated with this because it's the same company. Oh, here we go. There's the three stage one, but where's the two? There's a two stage with the DI, but we don't want that. We want the two stage, huh? Huh? Okay, maybe it's the three stage one. I don't know. Maybe it's the three stage one. Yeah. There's where did that one go? No, I swear there's a three stage one that doesn't have an RO on it. And I don't know where it went. Huh. Well, that's weird. I don't know. I thought there was a, a three stage one that didn't have an RO on it. Uh, but it's aquatic life. Uh, that unit actually works really well. It's super easy to change the filters and stuff like that. Um, if you want to go a little bit, there are some cheaper units that are just an inline unit that doesn't have the RO on it. That's really what I would be personally kind of looking for, um, on my end. Cause that's a, a lot of what I do here. Uh, even though I do have the deionized cartridge at the very end of mine, um, I, I have really clean water here. So I, I do it that way. So you might be able to just get your well water back to like sort of what mine is out of the tap. Uh, cause mine only has like some ridiculous, like 35 TDS or something like that. Uh, so I've seen it as low as like 17 at one point, but, um, uh, I have like really clean water out of the tap. So maybe you get close to that and just want to pre-filter ahead of time. Or the other option is, is to figure out exactly what is in your water um, that is coming from the tap. And then you can bring your fertilizers up to match that. Your plants will generally outcompete 
um, the algae by that point in time. So, and I would also consider some fast growing plants. Um, I know the, you, you guys know I'm not a huge fan of Valsneria, but Valsneria would be a good option. That is something that will really start cleaning the water once it starts growing rapidly, which it will grow rapidly. Uh, maybe some Sagittaria, something like that, that, that can grow in carpet and, uh, and grow quite a bit, can help you like clean out the water column and stuff like that. <clears throat> Uh, Daniel McCoy says, like this video, y'all, come on. Um, let me see here. Did we even send anybody over to the aquarium co-op today? Because I had mentioned it earlier, and I don't know. I don't know if anybody. I don't know. You guys could just tell me in the chat. Should I maybe just stop talking about it? But I'm, I don't know. 15% off just seems like a super huge, um, super huge deal to me. And. You know, you guys know I, I buy if I buy stuff, I buy it direct from Corey. So I don't I don't need to like go online and do that. But man, if you're in Florida or New York or California or whatever, I definitely go with it. Um, HDJC86 says all these Washingtonians bragging about their tap. Meanwhile, liquid rock and chloramine where you're at. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not I you know, I have nice clean water out of the tap here um and you know i'm i'm sorry you guys have weird water coming out of your tap but um that just means you're gonna have to do something to um improve your water situation you know and i know that one of the routes that i would go is one of the two that i just mentioned um Oh, that's a good point. Does the 15% on the coop work for gift cards? No, that's the one thing that it doesn't work on the um, uh, on that website. Otherwise, I would just go buy a bunch of gift cards. <laughs> Get them 15% off. It's like 15% more money for free. Uh, no, that's just the one thing that doesn't work. Um, do, 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 do. Oh yeah, Gilla says the reason it's a big deal is because you can get that stuff that uh, that doesn't normally go on sale, like CO two equipment and like LED lights and stuff like that. Like that stuff doesn't go on sale. Like I get it. Like fertilizer goes on sale a lot, things like that. Um, and y you know what I mean. If you guys happen to be waiting until, um, if you guys went and looked at the Black Friday deals, I'm gonna be spazzing out on Monday like I normally am, and uh, because you guys are gonna get a bunch of the the rocks and wood and stuff that I used in the 120 or in one of the 120s. <laughs> um, that stuff's going to be like a whole bunch off on uh, on Monday. I think it's going to be like 25% off or something like that on Monday. So uh, I don't understand if some people were waiting and, and that was their plan. But um, the lights and the CO2 thing, that's, that's the big deal to me. Uh, you know, I have CO2 equipment, so I'm pretty well set, but I, when buying that stuff, I definitely would. Uh, uh, HDJC says, bummer on the gift cards. My tank is not ready for the stuff and things. I'm, uh, those of you that can't buy anything right now, don't worry too much because I might have something in my back pocket for you guys later on, you know? Um... Let's see my tap water. So the Trek Trekkers per per Trekker PSR. I don't know. Uh, it says my tap water is 8.2 pH. Aside from using a source of tannins, uh, what is the best way to bring my pH closer to 7.5? Should I not worry about it and choose only what it can tolerate higher pH? Um, a pH controller with CO2 would be a great way to do it. Um, you could definitely buffer some of the water down with some of the like uh, ADA aqua soil or fluval stratum. Any of that, any of those kinds of substrates will help bring it down. Um, filtering the water before you put it into the tank <clears throat> that will be helpful. Um, you could certainly try any number of those things and bring the t bring the pH down a bit. Um, you know. Back in the day, I had this big tank that I put lace rock in. And as you guys know, lace rock is essentially 
concrete, you know, so it's going to bring that pH up quite a bit. Um, and I would balance that back out with the CO2. So it would, um, if I left nothing in it, it would climb to like 8.6, something like that, um, over the period of time because the rock would be doing it. Um, but I bring it back down with CO2. So I just left my CO2 injecting 24 hours a day to keep the uh, to keep the pH down, and it would leave a little bit of a pH swing, and uh, it would cause a bit of a deal. What is going on with the super chats right now? What are you guys doing? What is happening here? <laughs> I'm completely confused by these super chats. <laughs> it's pretty funny. All right. Um. Okay, so we got these super chats. Let me get to these super chats. <laughs> Cuz you know, at least at least one of them What is this? How would I would I recommend Google Chrome to a friend or co- what is this? What is this pop up? This is why people want to stab Google in the face. You send me a pop up because I'm going to recommend Google Chrome web browser to a friend or a colleague. No, I would recommend Firefox cuz they don't put up Google Chrome pop-ups. Nonsense. Uh, Sorry, guys. We were interrupted by Google pop-up. Jordan Fisher with the $3 Super Chat says, thanks for your time and advice. Uh, MB Gold F. It's so hard to read this stuff sometimes. MB Gold F. (laughs) With the R... $10. $10. I have no idea what the R is. Maybe it's Russian. I'm not sure. Uh, hi, I have a planet tank with all plants growing well, except for Java moss, which is not growing and is covered in algae. Any tips, please? Uh, I do inject CO2 and fertilize and use tap water. Um, first and foremost, if you are really having an issue with Java moss and it growing a ton of uh, algae, Direct light is almost always the bane of existence when you're growing mosses. Uh, there are some mosses out there that like it. Uh, one of the reasons I use the Christmas moss in the new 120 is because Christmas moss likes direct light. Uh, Java moss, not so much. It wants indirect light. So I would position it somewhere where it's not getting the light directly at it. Um uh, and fertilizing does help with java moss but not a ton you know what i mean it's going to help but not like nothing crazy so uh i wouldn't worry too much about what fertilizer you're adding or not to for the java moss itself but you might have a an imbalance from um from fertilizing and the direct light onto the java mosses java moss doesn't like direct light so i would definitely check that out and make sure that you uh have it moved out and then hopefully that can kind of clear that up for you but uh almost always when i have that problem it's just too much light hitting the java moss same thing with like physidens and stuff like that um you know we see these bright you know kind of well I'm just going to say photoshopped uh, because they're processed images uh, on the internet of things like physidens and Java moss and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, the interpretation is, is like, man, it's going to grow super bright and, and snazzy. And then when we get it, we're like, yeah, we're going to put a lot of light on it and stuff like that. And then it just grows algae on it and is very unhappy. So um, try to take that with a grain of salt if you are, you know, if that is something that is affecting you, because I know that that would affect me. Back in the day, for sure, uh, I would look at these these amazing pictures, you know, uh, you know, with with people that are like they got cameras like this, you know, and they're like taking pictures and then they process them on Photoshop and make them look all super fancy. And then it's like, why don't my plants look like the super fancy picture man picture? Uh, and the reason for that is is that people got fancy cameras and then they post process and uh, they end up looking a little bit better than they're supposed to and we end up shining too much light on them. So I would keep that in mind and uh, and go that route because most of the small plants and everything that we're growing come from the bottom of the forest, the canopy, whatever you want to call it. They're, they're coming from underneath the trees, down low where the people are collecting them, you know, where the people go to get plants. They're normally pretty shaded. So uh, keep that in mind. Joel Gillett says, thank you at Candy Overhauls for, um, you know, just super chatting, I guess. 54 Punchy with the $3 super chat that says, thank you, Joel G. And 
the three dollar super chat just blank uh scott scott shrimp shrimpery and more mr steven himself says hey man thanks for what you do you're a real guy and i can't wait to get ice cream again someday that's right buddy we are gonna go get ice cream again someday and uh it's gonna be glorious you better get to work on um uh, uh a homie for uh olivia so you know we can go on play dates with our babies i mean obviously we live 3,000 miles apart but that's not a big deal we can do play dates i got airplanes and stuff like that right oh man i got the co2 art box here loving it loving that loving it uh ginger graves with a ten dollar super chat says have you ever used under gravel filtration i've got a few i've got it in a few tanks i'm thinking of adding a pump to increase flow just wondering if you had an experience with it uh many many years ago a lot of the planet people thought that under gravel filters would be the jam um cory would be the guy to ask about those because uh the few times that i utilized them um, within a time frame that I can actually remember, I was like, dude, these are a disaster and I don't like them because <laughs> they're just not necessarily doing anything that makes sense for me to handle. Um, and, uh, you know, keep them happy. Uh, and keep my tank happy and keep my tank operating well. Uh, you can definitely utilize them, but um, I think with an undergravel filter, you really do have a tendency to um, get into trouble with... Uh, what's the word? Um, just things getting root-bound uh, because it's pulling so much excess stuff down through... And getting caught and getting root bound into the into those grates and stuff, that it can really get clogged up, and then I I have a tendency to to have a real problem um, with what I'm trying to do. Z H uh, Y I U N. Did I spell that right? Oh my god, I did. I spelled it right. Sweet boo. Uh, somebody was asking, is it even for sale yet? Let me see. Oh, here we go. Yes. Here's what, uh, so people are wondering about, uh, what, what gimbal I use, there's a there's a link right there. Um, this one, so the one that I use is, I just got this. So I wouldn't even hardly say that I really use it. I'm starting to use it. I'm starting to use it more and more. Um, it's the Zion, um, Zion, am I saying that right? I don't know. It's the WeBill Lab. Um, and I don't know when this is going to be really easy to order. Um, but I'm liking it so far. Most people have recommended that I'm, that I should get the, the bigger one. There's a new, so there's a, there's a bigger version of this one. Um, but I found this one to be pretty sufficient for what I do. Uh, and the, so the, and the last thing I want to do is get something that's bigger be, just because, you know, that's going to be a, a monumental, kind of kind of a waste you know what i mean like why do i need something that's more expensive and more bigger uh i did pre-order that one and full disclosure i ordered it directly from zion uh pre before it was even out so uh i did have to wait a long time <laughs> uh, i definitely had to wait a long time and uh that took a while barnabas roy says what's in the box i don't know what's in the box oh the co2 Oh, on the, um, on the CO2 art, that's actually one of the, this is one of the expansions that I'm going to have to be able to, uh, that I'm going to be using with the, the CO2 diffuser. So you can actually see it. This is just the, the expansion piece down here with the bubble counter on it. Um, I, f I find it to be actually pretty cool and a real modular system. Uh, I'm actually going to run all of my tanks off of one of those, um, 
and it's that's going to be pretty exciting. So I think it's going to be pretty cool to streamline that whole system and and have it be uh, have it be working that way. I think it's, uh, that way is going to is going to work really well. And I'm color coordinating all the lines too, so I don't mix them up like I did a while ago because. I have the uh, CO2 lines that were like the same color and the boy how did that start getting confusing and um, trying to figure out which one was which and I, I ended up like mixing them up on accident. Um, let's see here. Um, I'm drawing a blank on... Uh, Cancer Train is asking, what about plenums? Have you had any chance of making a no-filter tank with a deep sand bed like that, uh, like that shop in San Francisco? Um, yeah, the easiest way to do that, um, hold on. Hold on. This will take just a second. Um, if you want to do an aquarium like that, Go to the lady who invented it. Um, and the way that you'll be able to do that is you'll be able to buy this book right here. There's the link for it. If you go buy that book right there, it'll give you a full description of how to do that. Uh, she's the originator of whatever you might want to call a dirted tank with air quotes, whatever. Um, she's the one that started the no filter, uh, only filtration with plants and, and, and basically deep said deep bed stuff um in fresh water uh there is a, a bunch of salt water stuff i've done deep sand beds and doing filtration that way with some success and that the science makes sense but i'm not attentive enough for it to be a system that works well for me um so i do try to stick with um, so like in my reef, I have a refugium and a skimmer, and that's my main two parts of uh, filtration in there. And then my uh, planted tanks, I run the sumps. So I do particulate filtration. I do biological filtration with biomedia, essentially. I do oxygenation. So I oxygenate also. That's a type of uh, the filtration that I use. And then, of course, all of the piles and piles and piles of plants so all those things in conjunction in my freshwater tanks run a really nice system that i can maintain so it my way isn't the only way to do things for sure but my way is the way that works best for me now it might work great for you it might not work great for you so that's that's always something that i, I always try i always forget to mention but um but I have a tendency to forget. Like somebody earlier was asking about the ca the cation exchange capacity of um, uh, fluval stratum, which probably has something to do that somebody was commenting on that on a video just a little while ago. So it's it's clearly back in the ether for a little bit. Um, cation exchange capacity is something I've been talking about for a really long time because it is one of the ways to look up um, what. A substrate is going to do within your fish tank if you are trying to get it to uh, grow plants long term and stuff like that then uh, the cation exchange capacity is a point of research that you're going to be able to look up because cation exchange is researched quite a bit by the agricultural companies out there so whether somebody's growing soybeans or um you know, corn or whatever, like those giant companies that do that, that's something that they re research a lot. So uh, you'll be able to find most of the types of substrate that you could be looking to put in. You can find some research that actually is backed up. So, um, you know, that's, that's something that I would look into. And it's something that I've definitely been talking about for a long time. Fluval stratum has a pretty high cation exchange, but that's just mainly because it's fired clay. It's not really anything other than that. It's not like a magical substance. It's, you know, you're looking for fired clay substrate and you can find the cation exchange for that. Unless you were to spend a lot of money to do the research and find out exactly what it's doing, you have to find these comparables that can really get you what you're looking for. Oddball Aquatics is okay, Joel. What's the biggest, weirdest thing you've noticed, learned since Olivia was born? Um, the biggest, weirdest thing I've learned? Um, not that much. I'm a pretty old guy, so most of the things aren't that shocking to me. So, you know, we had the. What is that? What is that? What's that baby poop called? It's like meconium or something like that. I'm, I always get that wrong. 
Meconium. Baby poop. Oh my god, it's meconium. It actually is meconium. Oh, I was thinking that it was an I, but it's M E C O N I U M. It's meconium, so it actually sounds. It, it, and by the way, meconium sounds like some kind of weird space metal, right? It's it, that sounds like something a, sp you know, sp space aliens would be like a ship. The ship's hull is made of meconium, and you'd be like, "Baby poop, <laughs> you're weird." Uh, so that was pretty annoying, but we were ready for it. We actually we coated her in olive oil. <laughs> We had our baby baby bag. We had a bottle of olive oil in there, so we olive oiled her up, and that was just like the easiest thing to deal with. Because you know we're old, and I'm ha I'm old, and I'm happy to take people's advice. If somebody is like, "Man, I had this thing happen. I did this thing," I'm like, "That's good advice. I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna give it a try." Cool. You know what? And the worst thing that could happen is it would not work out, and then it or or it not work out, right? So, like, if somebody gave you advice and it didn't work out, you know, you'd be like, well, it wasn't going to work out anyhow. So, all right. You know, so I, I, you know, I'm not saying I take every piece of advice, but if it's a good piece of advice, you know, then I'll probably just go for it. Right. Um, let me see here. Uh, Terry's Tropical Tanks. What's your source for acrylic paint for the back of tanks in court or larger? Um, I don't do acrylic paint for um the back of aquariums anymore i used to it there used to be a derivative paint that i would use that was um was a boat paint um tug boat <coughs> excuse me decking paint i gotta look this up uh so yeah bear has one that is uh that is a deck over but it's marine deck over so yeah, tugboat, solid exterior, wood and concrete coating. Um, and uh, I don't know if this one's acrylic or not. A deep base. It doesn't really say what it is, but um, SC one forty one. Yeah, this is the one forty one is what I used to order, but um, it's this crazy deck over stuff. It's tugboat paint. I mean, it's the, it's the weird thing. So here you go. Like here's somebody's review. Well, time will tell, but so far so good. This is very thick paint that is hard to spread. It dried very quickly. Painting went very slowly. Be sure to get the specific rollers for this type of paint. We love the look of it. So yeah, I mean, it gives you a perfect idea of what this paint is like. It's not easy to deal with. Um, it's, it's for painting tugboats. Like that's what it was paint was designed for. Um, and you could spray it on. It is a, a way to go with it. Um, but the reason I found out what this paint was is that a buddy of mine owns a tugboat company and we were talking about this paint and I wanted to try some of it out. So I tried some of it out and the way they, they painted on the tugboats is they put this stuff, they put the tugboat paint down and then they spread sand. They throw a bunch of sand in it uh, once it's laid down. They try to mix it in the bucket, but that doesn't work very good. Turns out you have to hand spread it on there, and that will work. Um, and that's how I found out about that stuff. And it is great for uh, painting the backs of tanks if you just want them to be one solid color. But nowadays, there is a better product that I very much enjoy a lot more than that paint. Because that paint is pretty much indestructible and... Um, this is a much better option. Um, hold on. I have to see if I can find the not spray paint variety. Um, no, we don't want that. We don't want that. We want, we want the, well, I don't know. Where did it go? Oh, here it is. Okay, here's the yellow kind, but we want the black kind. No, we want this, but we don't want yellow. Hold on. Hold on, I'll find it. It'll take just a second. Uh, there's the white one. There's the blaze, blazing orange. There's blue. 
We don't want blue. We don't want blue. White would be helpful. I think you could do like a really cool background um, with some thin coats of this paint right here. Copy. And it would probably give you that real opaque background if you put a light behind it. Uh, you could put a light behind it and <clears throat> that'll work. But any of these varieties of Plasti Dip, I find to be the best paint for a background now. And um, that's going to be the route to go realistically. If you're going to be painting tanks, just go that route. Because the Plasti Dip, you could peel off and change the color later if you like. Um, and hopefully that answers your question. I'm not sure if you're wondering about like painting a um, mural or something like that, like some kind of like a painting on the back. Uh, if you're looking to do like a painting on the back or something like that, then um, definitely it's going to be some different paint. Uh, Michael Van Giel says, hi, Joel. Uh, I started working from home recently, breeding guppies and Corydoras and looking for a guide what to feed at what time for maximum growth. Uh, I've got live uh, BB. I'm trying to think of what BB would be. Uh, freeze dried, frozen, dry food, powders. Um I'm trying to think of what BB would mean. I was going to say bloodworms, but that's not what. Um, black. Oh, God, it's something. It's black something. Oh, my gosh. Crazy brain fart. Um, but if you're looking for the best, um, and this just applies to any fish, if you're looking for a good growth rate or whatnot, um, look at it the exact same way that you would like your own feeding oh baby brine there we go that's what was missing <laughs> i'm like it's got to be it's got to be something that's so obvious right <clears throat> yeah baby brine shrimp okay there we go and which i should have i should have known better sorry guys um but just go this route uh, a varied diet of things so if you do have um a vegetarian type fish you want a lot of different veggie sources if you have a protein based fish you want a lot of different protein sources so a varied diet is going to be important so just go varied and it sounds like yeah, i mean you got five different kinds of food if you're feeding um if you're feeding two days in a row and skipping a day and feeding two days in a row and skipping a day you're not even really going to duplicate in the um you're not even going to duplicate in the same week so I, I feel like you're doing fine and they're going to grow as fast as they're going to grow. There's no magical make my grow, make my fish grow super fast. Uh, but Candy says, love the small fish slash fry food from the aquarium co-op for my guppies. Uh, yes, that's a good, that's definitely a good option. Um, uh, I like that food. Obviously, it's 15% off right now, you know. So don't forget to go through my affiliate if you're going to, if you're going to go there and buy a bunch of fry food, which I'd recommend because it's 15% off. But I wouldn't be tripping that hard because that, that food goes on sale quite a bit and it's not that expensive. So I, I just try to tell you guys about the sales with the expensive stuff because that's the time you can save like a good amount of money. I always feel like, you know, if something's like 15% off and it's $9, I'm like, yeah, okay, it's 15% off, but I'm saving. What is that? Uh what's 15 times nine. So 90, a dollar 35. I'm like, I don't know. I saved a dollar 35 word, you know, but if something's a hundred dollars and I save 15%, I'm like, Oh, I saved 15 bucks. I could, yeah, I could have a little, uh, I could have some shrimp with my dinner. <laughs> Speaking of shrimp, somebody was asking about shrimp in the 120. If I'm allowed to talk about it, uh, I'm allowed to talk about whatever I want. Um, and uh, I would love to tell you exactly what shrimp are going into the 120, but we don't really know yet. I do have some. Uh, I do have some King Kong shrimp, and I do have some uh, some blue bolts. Uh, I don't have a ton, but I do have some. I, I managed to uh, get a couple. But uh, I'm hoping to see if some are going to throw some babies or not, and uh, that's probably the route I'm going to go. Or. Or I may or may not contact some shrimp people and um, see what I can do. You know, I talked to um, Simply Shrimp and Disco Bee Shrimp and a couple other people, and they all seem pretty excited. Um, I think Flip Aquatics was excited to do something at some point in time, but 
Um, I, I don't know. I haven't really heard from Rob, and I think he just put 100,000 shrimp in his giant shrimp tank, so he's probably busy doing that, and uh, kudos, man. It's all good. Um, I'll find something to put in there, and I'm sure it's going to be fun. Guarantee it. Guarantee it. I'm going to have fun, and it's going to be fun, and hopefully... I mean, I won't guarantee whether you guys like it or not, but I'm going to have a good time. <laughs> um, Steve says, I don't even know what I saved on the two 3.0s I got today. Got a couple of 48-inch. Um, if they work nice, I'll buy more for the rack. Um, let's see. Candy says, "If you oh, so if you got two, save about $25 each, I would think. Yeah, because they're like... 15 plus even 750 so 22 25 somewhere around there each yeah <laughs> yeah so that's not bad uh ba -ba 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 -ba. what is this savannah the aqualama is asking if somebody has an instagram or a twitter where i can dm you then i could get your shipping address oh man there's something going on in the chat today we like that uh, Mass Aquariums is here asking if I should be changing diapers. Um, I don't know. I mean, if her diaper needs changing, I will. I'm on night duty, mostly. So, um, I mean, I'm here all the time as far as when I'm here. Uh, I'll probably be working tomorrow, so I'll be out in the field tomorrow. But uh, I'm, uh, I try to put Vicky to bed, and then I stay up as late as I can with the baby. Um, so when she gets hungry... I'll bring her in there, and then um, I'll get. I'll have to wake Vicky up to feed her, and then um, I'll tell Vicky to like go back to sleep, and I, I stay up as late as I can, um, which is typically like one thirty about that. And uh, by that point, I just start falling asleep. So then I bring her in, get her fed more and more time, get her changed, and then put her down, and then I go to sleep um, from like. 1 or one thirty until like 5.30 and then I am back up so um, and then I take a nap somewhere in there but you know we're just splitting it up as best we can and, and Vicky is not does not like to stay up late so I, I mean I don't want to stay up late either but somebody has to <laughs> so um, it just is what it is I'm, I'm doing my best to um, to help out so, but right now I don't have to be changing a diaper right now. I'm at work doing this. Uh, all right. So as you guys know, this is a Friday where we answer the Patreon community tab. What's a Patreon tab? Well, that's where we crowdsource being able to even do this show, being able to show up and uh, and do the thing. You know what I mean? We've got to do the thing. Uh, it's a much easier way for people to support the show, to support the channel, and to support some of the projects that we work on around here. And uh, it's it much. I find it to be much easier because you could be somebody that chips in $1 a month and you're able to be in that community and do your thing. Um, you can post up on the community. You can start conversations with people you can figure out what's going on and it could just be like a dollar a month so i feel like that's a good deal it's a once a month charge you could fifteen thousand is the cap they won't let you do more than fifteen thousand a month so that's the most it could ever be like patreon won't even let you do more than that so hey it could be from one dollar all the way up to fifteen thousand but not any more than that so that seems reasonable right one dollar seems reasonable to me. So if you feel like this has a dollar of value to you, then you could pop over there and uh, once a month kick in a buck, right? Or not. Do what you got to do. Alyssa Bentley throwing down says, as I mentioned how my male apistogramma, uh, I can never say this right. Hong Sloy. I don't know. I can never say that right. I uh, jumped the tank last week and I was all set to go down to the wet spot and see if I could find a new one when I noticed some of the Endler Fry looked kind of stubby and weird. I'm pretty sure I have a Pisto Fry, which I bet you do, because the close proximity here, like, yeah, I bet you you do. So 
which is lucky that you don't have to drive all the way down uh, to the West Spot because it's all the way down in Portland, even though I don't like, um, you know, I don't like having to drive all the way down to Portland, but I do like having to drive all the way down to uh, be at the West Spot. So that's a good thing, but it's also like I don't like to drive. Um, but she did post up a YouTube link that you guys can go check out if you like. Uh, check out the video. And uh, the update two days later was I haven't seen the babies in a couple of days, thinking something might have happened to them. May just end up trying to find a new male anyhow. Well, you know, either way, whoops. Either way, that's dope. And uh, I hope the fry make it. Because I'm always sad when the fry don't make it because they're babies, right? Lorena is asking how the reef is doing. The reef is doing awesome. I'm going to have a bit of an update on that uh, coming up fairly sooner than later. But we got so many video. I got got so many videos right now. We got to get a lot of stuff. Uh, Dolly Vigil is asking, "What is the wet spot? The wet spot is an awesome fish store in Portland, Oregon. Um, it's where I would order my fish from if I was going to order fish." I order fish from the wet spot. Uh, it is a great store. It is also in association with the Cichlid Exchange, so they are a huge wholesaler. Also, they do a bunch of cool stuff. Great people, great shipping, um, great selection. Just like those guys all around. If I order fish, I order from the wet spot and get them shipped to me if I do that. If I'm somebody that does that, I'm that's me doing that. That was what I would be doing is fish in the mail. Johan says, uh, fish of the week last week. He was a little late getting it in, but that's okay. We ain't mad. Uh, the kissing gourami, also known as the kissing fish, or as the kisser fish or pink kisser. The kissing gourami is silvery peach in color and has thick lips that can extend it or pursed as in kissing. And they are generally tolerant species, but males occasionally fight by pressing their lips together. They are surface breathers and must have access to the surface of the aquarium. Uh, I just, I love these fish. It's been a million years since I've really had any uh, gourami or anything like that. And um, maybe, maybe someday, maybe someday, maybe someday I'll have them again. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Uh, Dominique Nadeau <coughs> is asking, for you guys that use CO2 injection, what kind of regulator are you using? The brand I have looked at are Milwaukee, ISTA, American Marine, and GLA. What are you guys using? Um, I would be interested in testing out one of the GLA ones, which stands for Green Leaf Aquarium. I'd be interested in trying out one of those. Uh, I am currently, uh, let's see, I've used Milwaukee in the past, and they did not last very long. Uh, ISTA's not so good. Um, well, let's see, uh, what's... Aquatech. I've had Aquatech ones that have lasted a really long time. Uh, I'm currently doing the CO2 art ones. So these are pretty solid. I've, I've enjoyed this pretty much. Um, those are, I recommend, uh, the GLA ones, the Greenleaf Aquarium ones are super expensive. They're like twice as expensive as a CO2 art. So I don't know if they do any better for that kind of money, you know? But uh, those would definitely be, let me see if I got, do I still have it? Oh, no, that's not it. Hold on, let me, um, I'm going to do something weird here. I'm going to go here. Let me see. Can I do this? Oh. Oh, man, I don't have it. Uh, I don't have that one? Oh, you guys. What is the deal? <laughs> what's the deal with toilet paper oh my god guys or car parking what's the deal with parallel parking let's see so that's the one that we want right here right yes believe this is the one that i have copy now i gotta put it in the thing paste generate oh there we go copy i'll give you guys one too how about this i'll post one in there so you guys know what i'm doing this is what i'm doing i'm doing this like during the show it's pretty cool right <laughs> oh did it not work 
Oh, it didn't let me post it. Seriously? It went away? Oh. Am I, like, not logged in? Oh, my God, I'm not logged in. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> oh, it won't let me comment because I'm not logged in. Oh, that's goofy. Wait, but it's letting me like. Why won't it let me comment? This is weird. Hold on. Oh, I Hold on. Maybe I'll just, maybe I'll have to do it later. No, it won't let me comment right now. I don't know why it won't let me comment, but it'll let me hit the like button. I don't know. It's super weird. Uh, Preston throwing down saying, uh, thank you for the latest sump video. Uh, would you share what pumps you are using as well as the best place to purchase the spa tubing? Uh, the best place to get spa flex. I wish I could tell you, um, I wish I would tell you, I, I could tell you that there was a better place than Amazon, but there isn't. There is not a local store you can go to. Uh, Home Depot for spa flex tubing sucks. Uh, almost every plumbing store sucks because they never have they never have the stock they never have stock that is new that's the biggest problem uh almost every store that you go to has stuff that's been sitting around for years and years um because people people that install a lot of it do not go to a store to get it they order the whole spool i even order the whole spool because I know that if I get 100 feet of it, eventually I'm going to use it up and it's not going to be any better or worse off than the stuff I could get from the store. I mean, sorry, it most likely will be in better shape than the stuff I could get from the store. There we go. Um, so I, I would be equally as worse off or better off, right? Um, so I just get it from there and I did forward the, uh, the links to Preston. So he should, he should have those by now. And, um, I don't need to try and comment. Uh, then he had one more, one more question about when the, um, when I normal, when I normally live stream and that's Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 3 PM Pacific time subject to daylight and, uh, savings time and all that kind of crazy stuff. And, um, that's important, right? But uh, that's typically the thing, unless something's going on. That's that's normally the schedule. Uh, Gary Brown says, sorry for the mess. I was up late painting my stand. Should I keep the sign or fill it in? Uh, I'll be keeping track of the votes. On another note, uh, this is my multiple tank syndrome. I just unloaded over 100 endlers to my local fish store and got some Amano shrimp, uh, blue neos, and some dwarf frogs. I just recently bred my first egg-laying fish the Dwarf Neon Rainbow. Oh my God, that's awesome. Uh, I'm hoping to get a nice school of those. The rainbows, I will hopefully be able to trade for more at the local fish store than the Endlers. Don't forget to let me know about the I Heart Fish sign. Leave it in or paint it. Um, I feel like at this point, I would just fill it in. Um, you did all this painting already and... Like, I mean, if you taped these off or like done a stencil or something, like I'd feel like keep it, but nah, I'd just fill it in all black. It, it's just, this, this would end up bugging me because you didn't even start with the fish with the four cinder blocks that are right here. Like the F could be right here, F, I, S, H, but the H is down here on a whole nether rung. That would, that in its own right would drive me nuts. But because you didn't stencil them, that would drive me nuts also. So I think personally, I would just fill it in uh, and go that route. That's I, that's just what I would do. And I would probably move this tank right here to the middle and put these smaller tanks on the sides. Because um, as noted down here, it looks like the wood supports are bowing from uh, Admiral, Admiral Blackbeard. Um I don't know why you said you would turn them 90 degrees. They are structurally stronger. But, oh, I think it means to turn the supports at 90 degrees. Yeah, everything would fall over if you did that, though. But, uh, yeah, that's a good point that this side is overweighted compared to, like, this water volume over here. But, yeah, I would just fill that in all black, personally. 
Brian Dahlberg throwing down says he's late to the party, but I'm a patronizer or an oceaneer now, I think. <laughs> I like it. Uh, thanks, Brian. I, I do appreciate you coming in and becoming one of the oceaneers or a patronizer. Either way you want to put it, uh, it's a great way uh, to help support, and I appreciate it very much. Barbara Jackson says, I ended up ordering a whole spool of quarter-inch air tubing, cheaper by the foot and easier uh, to store and use. Uh, agreed. I do that a lot. Uh, I'll often order the whole spool and just go that route um, because it's uh, normally a great way to go. Uh, Braden Hooks asking, can anyone tell me what is the best beginner fish for a 55-gallon tank? I'm new to the fish tank industry. Um, you'd want to figure out what your water parameters are. The size of the tank is kind of important, but uh, we would need to know what your water's like. Uh, but the best beginner fish, like probably platies or mollies, um, guppies would be pretty good. I mean, those would all be great. Uh, HDJC is asking, follow the Corvus Coop link. Uh, how true to size are the shirts? I think they're pretty close. Um, they're not weirdly sized. So, um, you know, the shirts that I've gotten there were the size that I was expecting them to be. They weren't weird. They weren't weird size. They weren't big or small. Uh, they were pretty accurate. So I think if you if you get what your your typical sizing would be, it's probably going to come out. They're pretty high-quality shirts, so they're not, like, weirdly sized or, or like, weird seams or anything odd like that. So uh, Steve says those CO2 art ones are the bomb diggity. I have two and zero complaints. Yeah, so he's got two of the CO2 art ones. So there's another little testimonial for you that – uh, they work pretty good. So I personally would go with the CO2 art ones at this point. They look to be cost versus value, right? Them being expandable is a really big deal to me. Um, and not doing one of those six ways deals anymore is, um, is good as far as I'm concerned at this point. Savannah says, I live half an hour away from Portland and I don't even like the drive. <laughs> yeah, agreed. Um, Michael Van Giel I live in the Netherlands, so no American products here. For powder, I use spirulina powder and a product we call Artemia Varanger. Artemia substitute, very fine powder. Ah, <coughs> that's cool. I like that. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Raccoon Creek says, we are expecting a baby in May. I get up super early for work, so we will need to find a system that works. I generally get up pretty early for work, too. That's why I get up at 5.30 after staying up till uh, 1.30. HDJC says, uh, does Joel have an affiliate to Flip Aquatics? Uh, throwing down a shrimp order soon. Uh, no, I don't have an affiliate with Flip. Um, mainly because I've never, I've never... I've never gotten any products from Flip, so... The affiliates that I have are pretty slim. Like, I don't have a ton of affiliates. Uh, I have affiliate links with the Aquarium Co-op, and that's because, like, I've ordered products from there. I've used stuff from there. Um, I know Corey in person. That's probably the only reason why I have an affiliate with them is because I'm, like, I am very familiar with the type of business that they do. Uh, I'm not that familiar with what Rob does. Um you know, Rob was a guy who used to come to my old website and chat all the time back in the day, uh, many, many moons ago. So seven, eight years ago, stuff like that. Uh, he used to come in and um, rack my brain about he would constantly ask me questions about shrimp and stuff. And he's doing awesome now. As far as I can tell, he seems to know most everything that he's doing. Um, and that's that's where I've known Rob from. So I've, I've known him from online from back in the day when he was his handle is Lup Diesel. I think it's, I think it's still in there somewhere. Um, but I've never, I've never received any, I've never received any live critters from Rob. I don't know how his packaging goes. I don't know what he does. I just like Rob the guy, you know, so I don't have an affiliate with, with their, uh, with their products or anything like that, because I don't really know what to expect from them as a company. Um, I recommend people to go to the aquarium co-op because I know what to expect. Even if something is catastrophically wrong from the aquarium co-op, 
I know that Corey and that and and the company and the people at the company are gonna make it right, you know. So that's the only reason I recommend people to go there. Like they have really good products. Um, their plants are top notch. I know somebody mentioned in the chat earlier that they got some really cheap plants from somebody on a Black Friday deal, and um, oftentimes those are just bunch plants. You know, those you can get super cheap two dollar bunch plants from people. Um, I've seen that time and time and time and time again over the years that they're immersed grown bunch plants, no roots, nothing like that. That stuff is super cheap. That's super cheap to order. You know, they can sell them to you for $2 because you can normally get bunch plants from the wholesalers for, um, like 25 cents. Like if they're not potted, uh, a bunch of plants that they could just throw a rubber band on there and clip off the stuff and they even get to keep the plant because they're just basically giving you the tops of the plants. Um, I feel like that's a giant waste of money, even though it is super cheap, bear in mind, it is super cheap. I just feel like it's a waste of, of money to get some really, um, super cheapo plants. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I endorse the, the co-op. I've, I've put my hands in those plant tanks where they convert the, the immersed grown plants, uh, to, underwater submerged growing plants and uh so that that's one of the reasons I, I give them the endorsement you know and i'm not saying don't order from anybody feel free to order from whoever you like um but that's why i don't have affiliates with other people because i don't really know what they're up to you know what i mean uh ba -ba 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 -ba. let's see uh preston john melting in arizona this is the guy i got the scootin' fruity puffers from, by the way, if you're wondering who Preston John is, that's who Preston John is. And here's a little example of what, how you'd be able to kind of figure that out. The peacocks, Corys, and puffers, oh my, in the 250 gallon indoor pond is full of life. Everything but the juvenile puffers are breeding, even the celestial pearl Daniels. And if he's got celestial pearl Daniels breeding, I might have to make a, he and I might have to have a conversation about that. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, buddy. Hey, buddy, you got CPDs breeding? Celestial Pearl Daniels, is that the case? We'll find out. We'll find out. But I'll just, you know, I'll just call Preston at like four in the morning and be like, my baby woke me up. Do you have Pres Do you have um, Celestial Pearl Daniels? <laughs> hey, my baby woke me up because she pooped her pants. Um, do you have uh, Celestial Pearl Daniels breeding? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, like Ramosa chipping in, uh, giving a shout on the community page. It says, uh, is growing carpeting plants, I think, uh, I was thinking dwarf chainsword, feasible with Corydoras, or will they most likely just uproot them? I'm wanting to give my 65 gallon a total makeover with new substrate, currently has sand, and more slash different plants. Um, <laughs> let's be honest. Corridors will pull out whatever carpeting plant you have in there unless they're established. So you may have to rescape this tank and let it grow in before you put the Corys back in if that's what you really want to do. Um, they will pull out any... They'll, they'll just knock those plants right out of there um, when uh, when it comes down to... You know, when it, when it comes down to those... Uh, <laughs> Those plants you just planted, Corydoras, are the bane of the existence. And it's just, they just knock them out. You know, they just knock them out on accident. I don't even think they're doing it on purpose. Uh, but they just knock them out of there. And it's probably one of the reasons I don't have Corys anymore. Um, I got real tired of them knocking my plants out and uh, constantly having to replant things that I'd already planted, you know. Scott Williams uh, chipping in here to show my support for your wealth of knowledge and willingness to share it with us. Also... We local Western Washington fish keepers got to stick together. Belated uh, congrats on the baby. My oldest is named Olivia. Yes, we got we got two of us. Scott and myself have a great choice in naming our daughters. So what up, Western Washington? How you doing? We'll probably hang out at some point in time. Cody Hutton throwing in here. Says, love all that you do, and congratulations on baby Olivia all the way from Tacoma. And yes, the tap water is delicious. Ha <laughs> that's right. Where I live, the tap water is delicious. And maybe we are bragging here a little bit. Now we're starting to get to the point where some of the oceaneers are just bragging on here about how good our water is. And can't blame you, because it is. 
Kiwi Mamo all the way from New Zealand says, spotted the peppercorry snoozing. I just love how they fall asleep wherever they are. That is a good point. That I Yes, that is something I found very endearing with my uh, Corys when I had them back in the day. I had green lasers. I had salt and peppers. I had a couple other kinds, too. Strawberries for sure. I had strawberries for de- for years, like just a ton of those. Um, I'm trying to think if I had anything else. I mean, maybe yeah, pandas. Yep. Uh, I don't know. I've had I've had a lot of quarries in my day, and I definitely enjoy them. But uh, them pulling up plants, knocking up plants, it's just like man. Uh, Michael Van Giel says, any recommendations for a cheap and easy floating plant? Ooh. Almost every floating plant is pretty cheap. Duckweed? <laughs> I'd go duckweed. Uh, red root floaters. If you can, if you could um, Google search red root floaters, like on Aquabid, you can definitely almost always find them on Aquabid, like a bag for five bucks. And um, you can definitely find those. Luke Locken uh, says, hey, all I need, hey, all, I need some advice. Uh, I'm going to be moving across. God, why am I having problems reading this? Hey, all, I need some advice. I'm going to be moving cross country in a couple of months, and I need help figuring out how to move my fish. I have 11 quarries, 12 rasbora hets, two, two rams, one beta, one auto, and some snails, plus plants. We're thinking one or two five-gallon buckets with aerators and plants. Any thoughts? Uh, I would not do this. I, I would not. I would not do this. The the buckets with the aerators, the air stones, and all this, and and driving around in a truck or a car for a week and a half or a week or f- four days or whatever. Uh, I I don't recommend this at all. I would get all the tanks, all that kind of stuff. Um, I would rehome the fish. Um, a hundred percent. I would just get them sold or or adopted out or whatever. I would rehome the fish. Um, and the plants and all the things that you wanted to keep like that, I would ship to where you're going. I would have somebody ship them to where you're going to be at. That's what I would do. Um, that would, that's the best advice I can give on that. There's just way too much bad news that can happen on a super long road trip, right? Like that temperature swings, crazy stuff. I mean, maybe you get in an accident. I mean, I don't even know. There's just a million things that can happen. Maybe you get broke down and it takes three weeks and then you just have buckets of dead stuff. Uh, that is not going to be a great way to move. And I wouldn't recommend it at all. Mike Howie, how I know it's how, uh, I like to say Howie though. Uh, clownfish update. I have some good news and some bad news. I lost the first batch of clownfish. I'm not surprised I didn't have a lot of fry from that group. However, the second batch of Ocellaris has hatched and I have a lot more fry. Also, my tomato clowns have spawned. Uh, below are the eggs from the tomatoes. That is sad to hear that the fry didn't make it, but man, that's why breeding saltwater fish is so hard, man. It is a this is a crazy, crazy, crazy disaster. It's so hard. Um, it's hard to do that. It's hard to breed saltwater anything. It is not easy. It's not an easy task. So, uh, although I am stoked to hear that you're breeding tomato clowns, because I love me some tomato clowns. That's for sure. I have a snowflake though. Um, kind of a kind of a gangster little fish, aquacultured uh, snowflake. Uh, Johan S has got the other fish of the week. We managed to get this one in, in time. Uh, the leopard gourami, also known as the leopard bushfish, spotted climbing perch or spotted leaf fish. In the aquarium, the leopard bushfish, bushfish is often seen as a hardy oddball that fits in some community tanks, but careful consideration must be taken since it is somewhat aggressive. The leopard bushfish in the wild is a predator, so it will take Small fish up to the general size of an adult female guppy. Anything larger than this will, for the most part, be ignored. Uh, these the bushfish, the leopard bushfish. Man, I don't know how many times I've looked at these in the store um, over the years. How, how many times I've seen these in the store, and I'm like, man, I gotta get those. Uh, but yes, they are a little bit aggro if you are just looking for a pure. Um, community fish uh, and maybe you're not ready to deal with uh what they'll eat or what they won't eat blah 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 uh but they are a fantastic fish i've never kept them myself i, I just i've always been like man i gotta figure this out i gotta do it that's for sure 
Uh, Devin Pepper says, which shrimp would you recommend breeding for profit? Fire Reds, locally bred, or Bloody Marys from Flip Aquatics, or Fantasy Blues from Flip Aquatics? Um, I'm 100% confused by that line. Um, I don't know what Bloody Marys, uh, the Fantasy Blues, the Blue Fantasy Dreams. I, I don't know. All the street names. <sighs> There's just way too many street names when it comes to shrimp. Uh, personally... I, Devin, I would send me an email. Send me an email, joel at darkstararts.com. It's a free way to just post up some pictures and let me know what you're what you're considering. Um, that That's the route that I would go. Um, Cherry Shrimp is kind of the street name for Neocaridinas, so it's like red Neocaridinas, and it's like, are they Sakura Shrimp? Are they Magical Fire Wizard Shrimp? You know, it's like um, the street names kind of screw me up, but <clears throat> I will say this. All white shrimp are expensive. Vibrantly colored shrimp, solid, vibrant colors, very ex expensive. Good idea. Um, specific patterns are going to be a good idea, um, and it, whatever you can replicate is going to be the best. The best idea, like you might, I guess, if you put it this way, let's say you have the water parameters and you can breed a thousand shrimp that are two dollars right or you have the water parameters where you could you could breed one two hundred dollar shrimp like technically you would have a super expensive two hundred dollar shrimp but you only have one so if you're talking about breeding for profit you want to breed whatever you can successfully breed over and over and over again and uh, maintain that business structure if that's what you want to do uh, all right we are to the end of the show for today because it is five o'clock and i got to get back to work <coughs> From this work to the other work to the more work. I got more work to do. Uh, but it is the end of the show. Hopefully I helped you out. Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. Hopefully I ent entertained you a little bit. Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. Uh, I want to recommend people to get your orders in to the aquarium co-op because that sale is going to end fairly soon. Um, and uh, that's going to be a real bummer if you guys miss out on it. So uh, get that in and uh, get that done just as a reminder. And uh, I'd like to say I love you all. Have a fantastic weekend out there. Don't do any uh, burnouts in the driveways of your neighbors. Don't do any burnouts in an uncontrolled intersection. That's just not safe. And a big thank you to Jordan Fisher, uh, MB Gold F, Joel Gillett, 54 Punchy, uh, Steve Scogland, and Ginger Graves for all of your super chats today. I very much appreciate it. Um, it's just 100%. Thank you very much for your guys' super chats. Thank you very much for your guys' support. Uh, I hope you had an amazing Thanksgiving. I hope your Thanksgiving worked out as well as mine did. I have a lot of leftover turkey, and I'm going to get to have delicious turkey sandwiches for dinner again. And uh, I love that. That's going to be my favorite part of Thanksgiving, getting to eat leftover turkey sandwiches a lot. You know what I'm saying? I could probably make like a hot turkey sandwich on some Myers potatoes pretty super quickly today. So, uh... I'm excited. I hope you're excited. I have a fantastic one out there. I hope to see you on Monday. Uh, hit the notification bell because there will be a couple more videos coming out this weekend. So, <laughs> surprise. Later.